This week's guest is the first professional female MMA fighter in New England. She is a fan favorite who came home just last month to fight for CES at Twin River Casino. I'd like to welcome the dark angel herself, Kaylini Medeiros. This week's guest is the first professional female MMA fighter in New England. She is a fan favorite who came home just last month to fight for CES at Twin River Casino. I'd like to welcome the dark angel herself, Kaylini Medeiros. Hey, 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 this is Evolve WMMA, and I'm your host. Shelly Devon. Fix it. Can you see me? Yes, I can. Good. That's awesome. You're, you're a good sport to be doing this after a, a day like you've had. Oh, you don't even know. <laughs> oh, a new, new job, right? New job? Yeah. No and, job. And it's like an hour and a half away from home? It's, with traffic, an hour and 15, kind of. Oh my goodness, Kaylini, that's that's a ooh. <laughs> that's a yeah. long drive. Wow. So are you still doing construction or what are you doing? Yes, I just joined the labors uh for the union. So I'm working now for a bridge company. Oh wow. So some civil engineering? I wish. <laughs> 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 it's more it's more type of a break concrete all day. <laughs> oh wow. So it's hard labor. It's very, very hard. Wow. Yes. Wow. I hope you're making good money. Not yet. This is the future. <laughs> this is the future. <laughs> I know. That's the sad part. Yeah. Work too hard but make less money than you used to, so but it's oh, part of yeah, but you'll get you. You have you must have some benefits and stuff now. Yeah, I mean it, the good money is coming after you make so many hours of working. So that's how it goes. You poor kid, you look so tired. And you're so good to be here with us. <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. A little bit tired. Yeah. So you said on the phone that you're going to be um, uh, putting a bid in for our new home. Well, well, let's not, I'll cross my fingers, but let me see what's going to happen. What's going to bring you to the next step. So. Oh, cool. You are, are talking. Stuart, just knew. I just decided this yesterday. So let me see what's going to happen. So you're looking, you're, you're, you're home shopping then? Not yet. No. no okay. I didn't get to that point yet. Okay. All right, cool. Well, you have a lot on. You have a lot of going on. You you just started a new new job, and and let's let's just get right into. It. Congratulations on your last fight. Thank you, thank you, Shelly. <laughs> that that must have been big. You must have been like, yes, got it. I know it was. Uh, I think uh, you know after the two last fights. I mean, it was not a bad fight, but it's still not a winning fight. So I was kind of upset about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was kind of conscious about the fight, so I just I just played safe too, you know. But it was a good win. It's good to win. I mean, three level three and zero on a CES cage, maybe maybe CES throw out uh, uh, the first female title fight. Well, a lot, you were yeah. you were the first one in New England. You were the first. Um, you were a pioneer in in professional women's MMA for being the first female fighter in this region to to fight. So and and CES gave you that shot too. <laughs> and you yeah you had the title. You have the title there, right? No, I never no. fought for the title. She, uh, CES never put any title oh, in line do? for the for the females. Not yet. Oh. But let's. Let's make that happen. Yeah, no kidding, right? Right. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I think they were waiting for you to come back. Right. I will. I will. I just gotta get, you know, situated in the new between the new job and moving and everything like that. I mean, you can ask for time off, but I would definitely have plenty of time on the winter because 
Um, they usually laid off people, so I'm going to be home for a while, just enjoying and training. I mean, try, so I'm is- still trying to get back to train, but I still stuck with my older job, kind of. I'm, so for the past month, I've been doing side jobs as well. Mm-hmm. So I leave my job, go to side jobs. So, so I haven't stopped since. That's so much. That that's <laughs> such a yeah. That's that's a lot. You're not the only one that um, I've talked to that that has that kind of lifestyle where they're you know trying to make both ends meet. They they want to keep their fight career going, but then you know they got to support themselves in another way because it's only you know you only make money if you fight, and if you're not fighting, yeah, you don't make any money. So that's no. that's that's uh, tough. And then two health insurance, all those other things. Yeah, and it's I mean talking about fighting is that me? It, that's the act we call extra money because unfortunately, it's like you know, UFC. I mean, you have to be the top five to actually make a little bit of money in the UFC. Mm. But you know, Victor, I thank you, Victor, so much. They they pay me good. I mean, you have to hustle to sell tickets around here. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's just for to do something that you love. You know, sometimes you don't even think about the money thing. I mean, I love to train. I love to fight. Yeah. So we don't think about the money because mm-hmm. if you just do it for the money, I would be home. I would be working. <laughs> I hear you. I know. It's too bad, though. I know there's um, Jessica Philibus might be doing something trying to unionize MMA, you know, set up a union for MMA fighters. I think it was her. I'd like to get her on the show and talk about it because it, it really does affect, you You know, you as a fighter big time, you know, and in the long run, I mean, it's the only sport that I think kind of doesn't really have something, you know, in place to, to support the fighters. But Yeah, it's pretty hard. I mean, like I say, I mean, even now, the big stage, I wish UFC would be paying those fighters a salary because yeah. they train every day, which is me consider it, that's the, their job. Yeah. Yeah, they should for the money they made. And then yeah. they took away, they took away like, you know, you can't wear, you know, somebody else's t-shirt and, and get yeah. you know, sponsors and, and all that. I mean, Reebok took that over, <laughs> you know, and it's like, I know. it yes. just doesn't seem right. I mean, you know, I mean, you're good friends with Amanda Nunes and, and Nina, I always mess up her name. Ansaroff, is, did I say that right? Ansaroff. Yeah. Ansaroff. And so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they're not going to say anything, you know, bad about the UFC or anything like that. But, you know, I'm sure it must affect them because maybe they're ma- she must be making good money now. But, yeah. You know. I mean, before I didn't see. Uh, for females, it was always so hard to make money with sponsorship. Mm. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, I I will tell you because it was a very it was very hard for me to even get one sponsor for for fights before you know before those uh, Reebok situation. I mean, I like I say for the top five fighters, it it's good. They really make a good money mm-hmm. with the Reebok um, sponsorship, and they make good money, especially Amanda right now at her level, being the champ. You know, that's, that's she. Awesome. I understand where she came from, like what she has today, she, you know, of course, it's she she worked very hard to get what, you know, everything that she has today, but UFC pretty much was there for her. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Um, were you, when, when she won, how, I, you, you must've been like, woohoo, <laughs> jumping out of your skin, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I, 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 know feel, I, I mean, it was, uh, I mean, it's fight camp is not easy. It's always something mm-hmm. happened in, uh, my fight camp against Mackenzie Dern. It was very, very, very hard. I got injured right at the beginning of the camp. And I was totally out of uh, any jiu-jitsu training and any type of uh, sparring. Uh, 
I hurt my ribs. I pulled a muscle between my ribs, my rib cage. Wow. And that took, took time to not, you know, to not feel anything. I went to fight already feeling. I went to fight without sparring. I went to fight um, without doing any ground game, which is, that's what I need the most. Um, I went to fight because I need the money and I love the fight. I would never back out of a fight. Right. But, you were know, you, I could were you back and forth between Junico and sit your tongue or were you just... Yes, yes. I mean I just I took a year off from a uh, sit your tongue, not for any other reason. It was only because between the jobs and uh get you know, I moved so I was a little farther far away from uh from sit your tongue so I couldn't make over there. Like you know, some Monday's nice plus Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays is my is my conditioning uh, uh, days. So I do conditioning three times a week, and then I train like regular three times a week as well. Uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and I take Saturdays, uh, Sundays off. Wow. Um, I did some training at uh, US MMA for this fight. Um, Tom, Tom Hafers. Yeah, it was awesome. I can't wait to get back there. Yeah. Nice, awesome people. Um, what I did was, you do there? What did you train there at Tom's? Uh, we did a lot of uh, like nice light sparring. We did. We focused a little bit on the ground situation. Me, obviously, working on my wrestling, taking people down. Um, I was just training for the union. That that became at the same time as well, and uh, the training center is just like five minutes away from from US MMA, so kind of worked out so good. I was like, oh, I cannot drive from Hopkinton, Mass, all the way down to Hanover. I can't do this. By the time that I'm gonna get home, I'm gonna be dead. Yeah. And the next morning, I have to be up by five o'clock in the morning. So it was good. I was training over there. Train to see your tongue on a Saturdays. I couldn't make the Junico, but I'm still, I'm still a Junico fighter. Yeah, well, you, I mean, you're still training with Michael Grash or a local local, yes. right? Yes. yes. Obviously, yeah. yeah. He's, yes. he's always in your corner. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to retire together. <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. I'm so glad you 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 ended up at that camp. It's such a good good spot for you. Like it, it totally clicks. And you can see that once you got there, I was like, yes, yeah, she found her home. It's like, you know, she's got she's yes. in the right place. I know. About time. Yeah. About um, time. So I, I did watch that Mackenzie Dern fight. I was like, holy crap. I'm like, I can't even, like, I was like, oh, that's how it happened. I'm like, I can't believe, like, it was such a great fight. You looked so good. I didn't know you were injured. I, I had no idea about that, but you, you looked so good in that fight. And, and oh, thank uh, you. For, for it to end the way it did, I was like, are you I know. kidding me? Oh, you, it looked like your I, arm got caught behind you or something, and then she grabbed it or something. Yeah. You know? It was, I mean, she's so, she's just, I mean, what are you going to tell about Mackenzie? She's just so smart on the ground game. Uh, yeah. You had a good strategy in that game. Yeah, I didn't expect to like, get. She, she looked like, oh, my God, I can't believe she dumped me, you know? Yeah, I didn't expect till I had to take me down, like, at the end. I think, I think my fault was, like, when my corner said that it was less than a minute, whatever, I just thought uh, in my head, okay, just, you know, just hold her against the cage, keep doing the dirty box and keep throwing knees on it. The fight's over. And uh, I think she probably waited to that, to that moment to, you know, to try another takedown, and she was successful on a takedown, and she mounted. I mean, she's wicked heavy. I mean, I can't believe yeah. how much she weighed. I can't believe how much she weighed. She can gain after the weigh-ins. I mean, that was ridiculous. She was huge. She looked a lot bigger than you. I was like, yeah. even in her her most recent fight where she um, didn't make weight, I was like, she's a big girl fighting at, yeah. at the age she's fighting I, i'm like wow yeah i, I will see definitely my kids going up on the weight class because she's just gonna struggle to try to make 115 and uh mm -hmm. and she only makes two times in the whole life i mean maybe three three times i'll say wow 
So, so you were injured for that fight. And I, I, what did you do uh, for recovery? I mean, like, I know you went into the fight. You said you went into the fight injured, but what is your protocol or do you have one for, you know, dealing with that? I, I saw on, at one point, but I, don't, I can't remember when it was, you used the cryogenic chamber. And then what else do you do? Do you do acupuncture or anything? Uh, not really. I didn't do anything but just rest the area, not affect anymore. I mean, I went to the hospital when that happened. Mm. Uh, I went to take an x-ray because I thought that I broke a, a, a ribs. Mm. Uh, thank God it was nothing broke. So the doctor told me, you have to just rest, like don't do anything heavy. I mean, I couldn't rest, you know, so the whole week I was just kind of walking the treadmill, trying to get my body going. And in the second week after, then I started going back to the CrossFit, doing my shrinking and conditioning again. I felt that some work, some type of workout was bothering me. Then I re-injury again when I thought that I was fine. So I went back to the mat in, uh, doing jiu-jitsu and I tried to do a flip or something like that and I re-injury again mm -hmm. that me what are you gonna do it happens you know it's 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 part of the fight camp yeah I just try to uh, after the second time that I re-injury I just try to like not do it any more ground game like I'm done I cannot inspire I cannot get kicked I cannot get punched on it it, it was just pretty much just, you know, pad works, a lot of pad works and a lot of uh, strength and conditioning. That's all. Yeah. So you don't do yoga. You don't do any, any, anything like that for, for recovery or, I mean, you, it sounds like you don't have time to do any. any I wish I had the time to do yeah. anything like that. It's, you know, I don't have the time. It's just like go to work eight hours a day and then, you know, go to train and then train for an, an hour and a half, two hours, you're already done for the night. So yeah, you're exhausted. Unfortunately, I don't have the time. I wish I could yeah. train during the day, rest a little bit, train it again. But yeah, I remember, I remember when uh, Amanda was at City Tong with you, uh, helping you prepare. I can't remember which fight was it. Was it the fight against, um, um, what's her name? The, um, the Invicta, oh gosh, uh, Angela. Hill. Was it that that fight? That no, you, no. Uh, was it when fight I, before that, that was when I fought for Legacy. Oh, okay. So it was a while. It was way. Yeah. It was, it was way before. I remember yeah. them trying to get you to go down to what Coconut Creek. They were like, "You got to come down there and train every day." <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I remember you saying that. Oh, I wish. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, now I can tell Helen, and now you're able to support me, so I would just go down there and train. <laughs> Be your training partner, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that was another fight, too. That was a big one uh, against Angela Hill, and and um, it was, you know, a, a decision fight, but I, I was like, I know I was shaking my head. Was everybody else shaking their head when they got back, when you got back home? They were like, how did she win that? I just don't even know. Yeah, it was a good fight. Uh, Angela is a high level strike. I mean, nothing. I, I don't take nothing away from her. Absolutely. Yeah. Me. She's she's definitely working on her weakness with uh, the wrestling and takes down defense it was amazing. Yeah. So yeah, you know, plus I took her down a few times, but yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't hold her down. Yeah. I mean, she did a really, really, really good job. Yeah. She's a very tough opponent to, to finish, that's for sure. She's, yeah. she's very hard to finish. And you can tell that she went, you know, already right after she faced um, Jessica Andrade in the UFC. Oops. And uh, she went all rounds. So. Yeah. yeah. Nina, Nina Farhead was three rounds, so she's not easy to finish. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt for you on that one. That was a big, that was a big deal. I mean, like that was a huge fight for you. It was. And, and so, I mean, it was very exciting. And so the last three fights and you just, you just won against Jenna, uh, Serio? Serio. Serio. And, um, 
so where where is that gonna you know where do you want to go from there um cs actually asked me again to fight but i think um you know i have to wait a little bit and i still have three fights with invicta i want to get back to invicta this year um i'm gonna talk to you know talk to everybody all the matchmakers see what's the calendar for the for the for the year and probably get back by November because, you know, unfortunately the way that I'm working now, I don't want to take any fight and not have enough time to train. Yeah. I need to be smart. And uh, if I can't wait till November, if, they, they, if they're okay with that, that would be great because I will have a lot of more time to train and, you know, be a full, maybe go down to, um, Coconut Creek and stay there for a couple of weeks with Amanda training over there. That would be fun. Everybody's going down there. I think Kayla Harrison just went down there too. She was, oh, I, I thought all those I young, all, that's what they have to do. All those young fighters, they have to chase their dreams. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not that young anymore. <laughs> and uh, the UFC whole like dream thing's not there anymore. But I'm happy with what I'm at. I'm happy with what I accomplished in my life. Yeah. Um, I know it was not easy to get. I never gave up in anything. I'm still fighting. You're um, one of the only you're one of the originals that started in this area. Probably one yeah. of the only ones that's still standing actually and still fighting that yeah. started in this area. Believe me, I know I was there at the first fight. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yeah. I'm still here. Yeah, you're still here and you're still banging away, man. I'm like I love yeah. it. It's such a great, great um great piece of you there, you know, like that in this area, everybody knows you, everybody loves you. And, and, um, we're, we're happy to see you fight. I was glad that you were back at CES, but I, I want to see you fight on Invicta again and see what happens. Cause anything could, anything could happen. I mean, I remember speaking with, uh, Tanya Avenger and she's like, yeah, they don't like me. They never want to call me. And then sure enough, she got called up and she fought cyborg, but but she got called up because nobody, there was nobody to fight Cyborg and she was um, ready. Uh -huh. That's what I was going to ask you. I was gonna, like, are you ready to go? But I, I know right now you're not because of the work thing. But um, what do you, what do you, um, what, what's your, your, you know, a habit or a daily routine that you, to keep yourself, like actually you're working now, but to keep yourself kind of, you know, in shape and somewhat ready to go. Oh my God. I think I lost more weight, like doing like the, first two weeks of, of work than uh, my fight camp. It's <laughs> harder than fight camp. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like, I think I'm doing like my workout at work right now because uh, what I've been doing like for the past two weeks is just crazy. It's like I have, it's a have machine that you have to break concrete on walls. They call it chipping guns. It's like a jackhammer, but you have to point against the wall, break concrete all day. So that machine is like 25 pounds, then becomes a 35, then at the end of the day, it's like 65 pounds, like holding all day. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> well, you are one strong woman. I, I, I mean, I'm always amazed how you just pick, pick these women up and just dump them. And I, and I know you can pick up some of the guys at the gym and dump them. And I'm like, She's so tiny. She's what five three. How much do you weigh? 115, 120 pounds? Like when you're when, when you haven't cut weight or something? And I'm like, how does she pick up somebody like that and dump them like they're nothing? Or carry them across to the other side of the cage to bring them in your corner so so Lobo can coach you. Yes. <laughs> yes. You do that. I'm like, yes. She's the only one I see that does that stuff. I'm yeah. Like, oh, bring it over here, Kayleen. Okay. I'll be right there. <laughs> It's really great. It's so great. Yeah. I, I can remember some time ago, I think you knocked out, what was her name? E Egnig or um, what was her name? Samantha Egnig or Stephanie. 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 And there was yeah. some, uh, some shit talk about you doing steroids. What do mm -hmm. you say to those people that still even I might say it? Yeah, I, I mean, that was, uh, 
Hope I lost you. Whoop, it's it's shorted out. Kayleen? First thing that I, I kind of I'm I here. lost you. <laughs> Fall in a bit. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, yeah, I lost you. So um what do you say to those people? Back in the dead days, especially like was it 2000 in I before 2012, um that was like when first it was a like CrossFit we started getting there. It was not too many athletes doing CrossFit, doing the workout that I was doing already. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my coach, I'm so glad I have the same coach ever that he always, always pushed me to the limit. I mean, I remember. If it, if, even if he said like, make sure if it's not, if it's not enough weight, if it's too much weight, let me know. I always let 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 him know if it, that's not enough weight, put more weight. Um, I'm glad I have that strength, you know. Whatever people say, of course, at that time, everybody couldn't see anybody fit or muscle or anything like that. If you see those athletes today, that's it's ridiculous. Like their body is just ridiculous. Like yeah. I'm jealous. So yeah. I was like, okay, that was back in the day. So how about today? Like everybody's going to say something about those female fighters now because they were not used to it. Yeah. And then they say, they say stupid shit like that. It didn't bother me at all, especially for someone that, you know, they obviously got, you know, put me on a drug test a couple of times and I have no problem doing them any time I did. And, yeah. you know, I just, okay, keep talking. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all. I can barely, I can barely take protein shake because I hate it. Can you imagine do anything else? <laughs> that's that's great. I'm glad. I, I don't know if anybody ever asked you about that, but I just wanted to set the record after all these years straight. I mean, I know it was written, everything that you said, and people are behind you and stuff. I know you, and I know you don't. But like, I I just was like, okay, these people are just don't even know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I, was I mean, those day, I mean, those. It, you can tell for today. I mean, when you see all those athletes, it's just like I'm. I'm jealous of, of when I see. It's like, oh damn, you know. I was at one of those IBJJF whatever um, tournaments, and I was in the the ladies' room, and there was some um, uh, com competitive some women behind me that were going to be competing, and they just weighed in. And they were talking about what their weigh-in was. And they were saying that they were 145 pounds or 155 pounds. Helene, they were like 5'3". Ripped, oh with, ripped with muscles. Like, I mean, That's there crazy. wasn't an ounce. Women, they, 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 they were so, like, lean. I, I was like, there's no way you weigh that. <laughs> no way. And, and they're like, no, I do. And I'm like, there's, there's just no, they were, they were shorter than I was. I, I'm five, right. five and a half and they were small. And I'm like, there's just no way that you weigh that. And, and they were like, I just got weighed in. They're like, it's yeah, I felt, I felt that was not a advantage for me, like to pull a lot of muscle. I mean, I used to fight 125 and then even, even 135, but never make 135. But Muscle, like I can tell from today, when you do everything right, you learn it by the time. Mm. Um, I used to guess off like quickly, yeah. because muscle takes a lot of oxygen. Mm -hmm. So I used to be, I used to be like so tired after the first round, and then you know I started up, you know, kind of fixed my training fix the way that I'm supposed to be trained. I'm supposed to last on a fight, not to be just strong for that five minutes only or three seconds or seven seconds. So we change a lot and um you know I'm happy. I mean I all my my all my fights, I mean my fight camp I, I, I'm I'm one twenty two pounds, one twenty three pounds. That's my fight camp goal. So I don't really cut weight for one fifteen. Mm -hmm. I have to do the last um, the last fight. I cut a little bit of weight because I decided after I fought uh, Mackenzie, I was like, it's no way because I feel that everybody's so, so bigger than me. Mm -hmm. So I have to make myself gain a little weight 
um, I start doing a lot of squat at the at the gym, mm -hmm. even before sign up with the fight. So let me put some muscle in my legs. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that I that I want to gain muscle would be legs and a glute, mm -hmm. because that's where the power comes from. Yeah. Before I used to take upper body, upper body, but that's not that's not what generated the power. So. Well, Those I wouldn't. I wouldn't have known that you look. I mean, you look. You look pretty even. All you know, lower body and upper body for for mus muscle wise. So, what? How did you? You 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 touched on that. You changed your uh, way of working out so that you would you wouldn't gas out, say, in the second or third round. So, uh -huh. what was? What did you do to change from the strength training to what? What, what did you do that was different? Uh, me and my coach, we pretty much do like a. 25 and maybe sometimes a 30 minutes straight workout and that involves the new program that called egg, egg fit so it's a between an air dine bike a roller and a skier and in all between there i we put something else so it's all about speed and then in fast pace in the whole workout in the last 25 to 30 minutes I mean, it's it's not funny. It's a hell. <laughs> you have to you have to reach calories. You have to reach you know timing and uh, but it, that's what gets me there. I mean, when I fought Angela for five rounds, I mean, first time ever, I felt I felt great. Yeah, you didn't even look gassed at all. You look like ready to go into you know doing five round. Yeah, the whole five rounds, but you look completely like totally on top of it. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. So, um, aside from, um, say, the losses that, you know, the last two losses that were kind of big ones, because especially the one against Angela Hill, that was a title fight. Tell us a story um, of a time in your journey that you experienced failure and what you learned from it. Um, first thing that I, that I learned from my losses was to never take fight out of your weight class first of all you know that i can tell from peg morgan's fight i didn't have to but i was just so amateur so still like oh yeah but i just want to fight i mean i'll take fight out of my weight class in uh if you're not 100 percent healthy don't take fights it's okay to pull out fight in my head it was never okay to pull out fight but I have to understand that if your body's not 100%, I mean, we're never going to come 100%, but if you already started, you're not 100% healthy. I mean, by the end of the camp, you're never going to be not even 60% to bring to the fight. So you have to bring 110% to the fight. So you have to feel good, you know. But all those losses, I mean, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me. That's good. You're you know, just, it just makes make me a better fighter every day. You learn from your you learn from that then. You absolutely learn from that and, and it gives you some drive for the next the next step. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, when you know, when you, you just touched on, you know, like um, when you're not feeling healthy, and I know you said you went into one of those fights you had like, you know, a rib thing, but like um Amanda Nunez uh, backed out of a fight last year and uh, because of the sinus thing and she got a little bit of flack at first but then um you know a doctor co corroborated corroborated ugh, i can't talk <laughs> <laughs> you know she came back she had the sinus infection um when 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 that happened you know what were you thinking like when when she cuz it seemed like it was a last minute decision you know like that she was going to pull out that she just didn't feel well what did you think of her when she did that just out of curiosity and then knowing what you know now um i i think it's so easy for everybody like at the moment to judge because they just want to see the fight they just just want to watch the fight but at the same time people have to understand that uh that that is something that she dreamed for her whole life to put on the line okay and i think she did the right thing she you know it was the right decision you know if you don't feel like a hundred percent or don't do it right it's not i mean obviously for the promotion for you know for the tv for the pay-per-view 
people can say whatever they want to say, but you are the only one that is going to be inside. That's nobody going to, you know, okay, I'll do it for you. It's not going to be anybody else. So yeah. it's your decision. I mean, like the last, last week when she fought Raquel Pinot and the Raquel fourth round asked to stop the fight in the corner makes you go back and fight. What else do you think the fighter is going to do if she already say that she can't fight anymore? Yeah, there was a lot said about it's that. Bad. It's pretty bad. I mean, so you are the one that you a fighter is the only one that can decide what you can do because nobody else going to decide that for you. Right. Yeah. I mean, they, um, when, when Raquel Pennington said, you know, she was done and, um, a lot, a lot of people were like, well, they should have, you know, called the fight. They should have thrown the towel and they, they didn't. But then the next day she agreed with them because they know she would have been, you know, kicking herself in the butt later, I guess. But I, I still, I, I'm torn between both sides of it. It's like, yeah, she, you know, felt like whatever, but um, it didn't get too much worse. And, um, you know, the fight went the way it was going to go. And, yeah. and then she still, you know, she, she put all her heart and soul into it. So I guess, I don't know. It's, I, mean, I understand corners, they kind of motivate you to, uh, oh, come on, let's go. Let's get this. Let's get this. But she broke a nose. So yeah. she was feeling, I mean, that was already the end of the fourth round that you lost every single round. Mm. I mean, you're just going to get more damage. Yeah. I, I think she just tried the next day to kind of say that she, they all right. So they don't get the blame. So they doesn't look too bad for them. I see. You know what I mean? Try to kind of protect them a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, you want your corner to motivate you, but you don't want your corner to, put you in risk exactly that's true too that i mean that's what the point was where everybody else was saying but when i heard that side i was like oh well you know yeah i'm flip-flopping between the both but it's good to hear from my, actually a fighter that's outside of it that knows and sees and is in the cage like yourself and is experiencing what what happens in there and when you're you know when you're like okay this is i'm 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 finished i you know, call it or whatever, because I can't, and I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to tap or get knocked out. Yeah, I mean, it was just going to the worst. That was never going to be for the, you know, for the best for her. Yeah. Good yeah. thing she was not nothing more than that. She, when she went down, she protect and then make sure that she was not going to get hit anymore mm. in her face. I mean. Hey, it's right. Yeah. So you, um, I'm going to thank you for being here. I'm not going to keep you any longer because I know you're exhausted and it's already 7.15. But I'd like to have you on the show again, especially, um, you know, come November, you've got another Invicta fight coming up. Maybe get you on before so to help promote you. Yeah, and, definitely. Yeah, I'd like to do that for you. And, and um wishing you well with, with your new job and, and that things go well. I, is there anything that you'd like to add, you know, before we sign off? Um, I know I haven't trained, so I would just want to let my coach know that I be work. That's the only reason that I will be coming back training in my trainer partners. I feel bad that Kylie's have, Kylie's having a fight coming up and I can't be there training with her. Mm. But she gets it. She gets she she has other people over there for her to help her out as well. And, a lot more uh, than what you had when you were coming up. There a lot of these women have more training partners now than than there's more women fighting now. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, thank you. Thank you for always uh, you know, promoting the women's fights, the Women's MMA, you were with us for since the beginning. I would have been a fighter if I was younger when I started right. all this. Yeah, I started. I mean, when I got into the you know martial arts, I was what like late thirties, 
and and then at Sit Your Tongue, I was mid forties. You know, <laughs> like, uh-huh. so I'm like, you know, the other thing I wanted to congratulate you too. You're you're engaged. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes. Do you guys have a date. We don't. We like to jump the steps, I guess. We <laughs> we actually we. We got engaged and let's, you know, we went to Brazil and my parents were supposed to be here for this summer. That's when we're supposed to kind of get married at first somewhere, you know, not in the, you know, in nothing like big, but just in the city hall, get the paperwork done, then go for destination wedding. But unfortunately, my parents can't come yet. Um, maybe next year, somehow, the end of the year. Nice. Um, we plan on it. I mean, we plan on too many things. I mean, she's always, she said that she doesn't wait. She's not going to wait till next year. I uh-huh. heard that. Uh-huh. So what a, what she, a, said she said that if I, if I wait till next year, she's going to be my girlfriend again. Nice. Nice. <laughs> That's she wants to get married now. I know. But we need money. We need everything. Then she jumped. We did uh, about three three months or two months. We did. Uh, then we tried to have a baby. We did insemination for two uh, for two oh, that's consecutive that's months. That's a big money. What is it, what is it now? Like ten thousand dollars a pop? No, that's this is for something different. This is a IVI type of okay. thing, which is probably going to be the next step. Huh? It's yeah, it costs a little bit of a you know money kind of five five thousand to just so right. so she's gonna carry because you're obviously not right. <laughs> yeah, I I just I I'm just can't no not as you know do the job that I do and train like I train uh, no. Do you think you'd ever want to carry a baby? I don't I don't see myself pregnant. I love kids. Yeah. I mean, I love to see her pregnant. That's yeah. She's saying that I'm too old for this. Look at her. <laughs> That's funny. You know what I find amazing? And I, I was talking to Tanya Evinger and I was asking her, I said, you get, you know, do you get a lot of like looks and what have you? I mean, you, the most public people that are in, in a same sex relationship, I mean, are in, mixed martial arts you're one of them amanda and nina and then um uh um the other Raquel. yeah Raquel Pinnaton. yes all these, all these women are all of them, you know so many are it's like it's it's like oh this is like the cool trend now <laughs> you know really it's it's a great thing to see that you know it's it's welcomed i i don't know why we don't see any men doing it i saw them once a long time ago but i i don't see much yeah not at all yeah well listen i want to thank you for being on the show it's been thank great you. catching up with you i wish you well in your in your new you your new job and i i really can't wait to see you fight again and i i know our our listeners will be um rooting for you too and can't wait to see you fight again Thank you so much, Shelly. Maybe after my next fight, I'll be married. Yeah. And then, <laughs> hopefully I'll see you at Sit Your Tongue soon, too. Yes, definitely. As soon as I, like I say, let me, let me breathe after all those jobs. I mean, work six days a week, 12 hours a day is like a crazy, crazy life right now. Yeah. I'm going to sign off. Thank you again. Thanks.